Welcome to tonight's show. We have Mr. Uh, Charles West on the show today. We, it's going to be a kind of a quick one today. We have several videos um, from Kingdom Racing. They're a new a new uh, org company that we're just working with, trying to promote them. Um, they're actually one of the only Christian-based racing and the Indy race cars that is out there. You're going to have a great show with them. I just got back from Africa, so this is our first show since we got back. And I have some testimonies I'm going to share with you, some things we're going to say, hopefully get you encouraged and everything. But most of all, most of all, we want to get you inspired to do the work of the Lord, inspired to do missions, inspired to do something in your community. And the Kingdom Racing, who we have today, um, they do something that, that no other people, no one else out there is doing, and that is taking the name of Jesus on their race cars, in the, in the rallies, and even winning a race. We're going to talk to you about that in a few, in a few um, short minutes. We'll be there. Anyway, we'll be right back with Kingdom Racing and Charles West, my guest. Welcome to the show. This is your host, David Yanez. And again, we have another great guest here for you. We have Mr. Charles West with Kingdom Racing. How are you, brother? Doing fantastic. How are you doing, David? Oh, we're doing good. We started to talk on earlier, and, and it's just like we start going. I was like, hey, let me hit the record button because this stuff's good. Yeah. <laughs> Charles, right. you have a unique ministry. I, I mean, I've seen missionaries. I've seen uh, teachers. I've seen evangelists. I mean, I myself go do mission work every single two or three times a year. But there's not many of us that are in the racing scene that you're in. So tell us how you just got inspired by that at an early age. Well, I uh, I was inspired uh, by auto racing, like uh, like we talked about earlier, from a very early age. At the uh, age of six, actually, is when I saw my first Indy car. I grew up in West Texas wow. around a guy, legendary guy named Jim Hall that uh, won Indianapolis a few times, and just fell in love with uh, the cars, the aspect of racing, and. We said went on through uh, uh, high school. Actually worked for an engine shop, an indie car engine shop in high school, and then after graduation, I went to college. Then went into the workforce as an IT worker. Um, just got to a point where I was very miserable. Um, ended up going through a divorce from my first wife, and um, you know it was kind of the lowest point of my life. Now I had grown up a Christian. Um, in a very large Baptist church out in West Texas, but um, even though I was a believer. I had not surrendered my life, mm -hmm. and um, there's there's two very different aspects there, as you well know, and being brought to the bottom by you know the divorce and just being absolutely unhappy in my life is the point where um, I surrendered everything to Christ, and, and it's it, it's almost funny when when I look back on it, um, like uh, I had mentioned earlier, David. God gives us our passions for a reason because that's where we're meant to be, and. If you had asked me even five years ago and, and, and even told me that I'd be doing what I'm doing right now and serving God and, and relaying the word of Christ in the world of racing, I'd have called you crazy. <laughs> but um, I, I got to a point where I, I had an uh, ability to take a couple of years off of work, and I, I was working for a pretty large airline that's based here in Texas at the time, and um, decided I, you know, I was just going to hand everything over to God and let him lead me. Um, and that ended up leading me back into the world of racing and almost immediately was introduced to George Del Canto, who had, had founded Kingdom Racing. Um, and our, our meeting was, was rather uh, amazing in and of itself because I had when I had when I had jumped off into that dark abyss, uh, not knowing where I was going to land, I kept hearing God telling me that I was going to share His word in racing. And Amen. Those two things don't go together. Oh, I and, bet. I bet. And and I kept thinking, well, how how is that? How are how are those two things going to go together? Um, and then the second day that I was at Indianapolis back in. Uh, uh, May of 2010, I was introduced through a mutual acquaintance to George, and whenever we made our introductions, he, he handed me his business card and told me, he said, we deliver God's word through motorsports. Mm. And it was like a truck ran over me. And I told him, I said, you know what, you and I are going to have to talk, 
And we ended up talking a couple of days later and just spent a couple of hours. And I told him my story. He told me his. And we've been friends ever since uh, doing what we, what we love, and that is sharing Christ in the world of motorsports. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an up and down ride and it's a, it's a, it's a never ending ride. Every day throws a new challenge and brings its own joys. Now, how does the other teams treat you? I mean, Kingdom's racing, how long, how long has Kingdom racing been established? And then how do others treat you? Um, Kingdom racing, the original vision came to George back in 2005. Um, there's a very, uh, interesting video on our website. I'm not going to use too much time here going into that because it's a pretty lengthy discussion in, a, in and of itself. But he had a discussion with his pastor about how, how do you know that a, a vision is from God? And uh, there, like I said, there's a video on our website that has uh, the content for that. Okay. And anyway, he verified that, you know, that that was the vision. But the actual implementation of Kingdom Racing did not hit the track until 2008 with Davey Hamilton and his return to Indianapolis Motor Speedway after uh, a really horrendous crash here at Texas Motor Speedway. Mm. So it, your original question as far as how, are, how do the other teams treat us, uh, it, fantastic. Uh, the, the entire IndyCar series is a family, and I mean... The, the, one of the first things that I learned was how close knit that everybody was, and there's a lot of um, I don't want to say attrition, but the people change jobs, and when you change jobs in racing, you you, you stay within the racing community. Oh. <laughs> so there are there are people who work for your team one one year, and then even later in that year, they might work for another team, and people with the other teams might might work with your team. So um, it, everybody really knows everybody else. And one of the cool things that's happened with Kingdom Racing since that original 2008 um, introduction is that we've been with a total of uh, five, I think five or six different race teams in the IndyCar series. So um, we, we've come to know a lot of people and a lot of people have come to know Kingdom Racing and what we stand for. Wow, that, that, that's that's amazing. And when when you're out there, what are some of the ways you outreach? Um, we we have a broad approach and we have a very narrow, deep approach. The broad approach is what we call our fan festivals, okay. where um, just to give you an idea, on Mother's Day at Indianapolis, May the twelfth this year, we had a concert um, right behind the pagoda in the massive pagoda plaza that they have, where um, we had Building Four Twenty Nine, Finding Favor, the, the uh, Carlos Whitaker, the Rhett Walker band. Um, had a, a massive Give Me Jesus Tour concert um, while there were cars still on the track. <laughs> and it, it, it attracted quite a bit of people that, you know, they weren't specifically there for the concert, but the people that were there for the racing got to hear an incredible uh, musical message of Christ. Yes. And it was loud and it was bold and it was something like had never done. Uh, even, at, had, even at the Indy, you can still hear the music over the oh, cars? Yeah, matter of fact, one of the one of the funniest things is that the concert ran late, and they were trying to do the press conference after the day of uh, practice, and the music was still so loud that it was it was showing up on the newscasts that uh, were happening all around the city at the time. So it went beyond that <laughs> in people's living rooms. Yep. So, yeah. like I said, God knows what He's doing there, but we do. We have these fan festivals where we put on these concerts, and we have um, the people who are walking along the midway or the you know the public mm -hmm. areas of the racetrack. Um, we can reach out to them with the musical message, with our own message. We'll have people out there handing out hero cards, which um, let's see if I've got one here. Um, not handy. I should. <laughs> That's okay. What's what's a hero card? You want it? What's what's a hero card? Uh, Hero card is a it's just a small uh, like nine by five piece of paper that or it's like a like a baseball card but uh, a lot larger okay. that's got information on it about the race team and it's got some uh, uh, QR codes that will link directly to a plan of salvation on oh, our wow website. that's that's handy exactly exactly so um, I I know we're on Skype here I could go run upstairs and snag one real quick <laughs> let me see if I got one in my my other that's book. fine that's fine. 
Yeah, no. Um, there's a there's an example of them on our website. Okay, I'll pull it and I'll have an image for everybody to see. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's also examples of all of our hero cards that we've had throughout the years. It's just it, it it's it's part of the racing industry where every team and every driver has a hero card okay. that um, they can hand out to fans and the fans can get autographs on. Oh, so that's fans neat. are already going around looking for these hero cards so that they can get driver autographs. So we actually we actually have ours that we're able to use to deliver the message of Christ and what kingdom racing is about. Now, um, share with me maybe a testimony that, that happened at the racetrack or after the racetrack. Um, one, of the, one of the coolest things that happened, um, uh, and this is on a personal basis, okay, but that's fine. It's, overall, it's an overall kingdom racing thing as well. Is, um, we had, uh, we, we had a, an incident a few years ago where a very close friend of ours named Dan Weldon was killed in the last race of the season at Las Vegas. Wow. And it was it, it affected a lot of people uh, very differently. Um, uh, the 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 uh, abridged version of that, as far as kingdom racing goes, is that we were trying to plan our fan festivals, our outreach, and uh, have all of these church visits, etc., around the Las Vegas race. And one by one by one, every single one of them got canceled. And so it comes September of 2011, we actually had a conference call to discuss, well, do we, do we even go and show up at the race? Um, Davey Hamilton, our driver, was going to be dr uh, racing in the race, but we didn't have any reason for Kingdom Racing to show up. Okay. okay. None whatsoever. Even the morning of the race, um, we were sitting in the parking lot outside the credentials office at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and I remember remarking to one of the other individuals, I said, I don't even know what we're doing here. <laughs> there's nothing for us to do. We're just going to be sitting here as spectators. Um, you know, there's no Christian work for us to do. And probably the worst crash in the history of the IndyCar series happened on lap 12 of that race. And we lost a good friend, Dan Weldon. Um, each member of the team uh, had been led into certain circumstances and I use that word loosely because I don't believe in such things you know everything is kind of put into into play for a reason but um, it was it was a month or two later once we got over the shock where we could look back in reverse and we could see why everything was canceled because our time was freed up then to um, interact with the people who were hurting because of the tragedy that had just occurred, and that was that was really a a cornerstone moment for Kingdom Racing because it really showed us that we needed to be there. Um, anyway, the testimonial portion of that is um, in writing one of the blogs um, that kind of described that very event that you know God cleared out our schedule because He knew what was going to happen that day. Um, we had gotten into some commentary arguments with some people online um, <laughs> that had to deal with theology and free will versus predestination. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was one individual who um, had really taken offense to the fact that that, and he was a he was a, a pastor himself, had really taken offense to the fact that um, God knew what was going to happen, and you know had caused us to clear out our schedules and. Um, you know, just went into the whole free will versus versus pre predestination yeah. uh, argument. Um, what was really really funny is that that was that was two years ago. You know, this year we actually had one of our Miles of Smiles families, which is our our close and personal outreach that I'll discuss here in a minute. They canceled out, and so we had a free day, but we ended up. Uh, just running into some church pastors at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and ended up bringing them into the suite, the hospitality suite that we had. Um, and one of the pastors that we came in was this guy that, that oh. caused the trouble. Um, and so we had, uh, even though we'd had some contentious moments several years ago, two years ago, we were able to reconcile on the platform of our beliefs in Christ and brotherhood in Christ. Um, and, and, and what was really, really funny about it is that I told him, 
I said, you know, I said, you, you just think that it was free will that brought you up here to this suite this day. <laughs> <laughs> you had to throw that in, didn't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. We, so, we got to, amen. But, that's just, that's a, one of the, that's, that's an example of, of yeah. the things that happen to us. But David, things like, things similar to that happen all of the time. I've, amen. I've had, I've had people that I've met, I've, I've stopped in a golf cart and picked people up in the parking lot and, and they already have some connection or fascination with kingdom racing and, amen and, and it and it's just beautiful to see it because that's god talking to us right there absolutely we got about a minute left so tell us about your smile program that you have the, which one the, the program you're gonna tell us next about oh the miles of smiles, miles what we smiles. Do, yeah, what we do is we actually bring in um nominated families um, that have been or groups of people that have uh, endured tragedies that have gone through some kind of, of you know disadvantage in yeah. life and we give them an absolute VIP rock star treatment uh, day at the track. We, we take them into the hospitality suite, the hospitality tent. They get to meet the drivers. They get to sit in the race cars. Oh, wow. They absolutely get full behind the scenes coverage of a race. And it's just a day to forget whatever, whatever tragedy that they've been through or hardship. And we tell them the kingdom racing story. They get to meet George. They get to meet the rest of us. They get to meet Sam Schmidt. And through telling the kingdom racing story and telling all of our stories of salvation and uh, uh, um, rebuilding, mm -hmm. they hear the word of Christ. And so that's that's really what it boils down to is being able to reach out on almost one-to-one -one basis and, and just tell them, Tell them, hey, look, we're nobodies that God plucked out. He took our passions for auto racing, and he put us here on this amazing platform to where we can reach out and turn it back to other people and give back. Amen. So, amen. 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 So give everybody your website and contact information that you want to share with them. Absolutely. Our website is www.kingdomracing.net, uh, emphasis on .net. And uh, there's links on there to our Facebook page, to our Twitter account. I invite people to follow us. If they can make a donation, please do, because that's what makes Miles of Smiles, our fan festivals, Absolutely. really our entire outreach program possible. Um, and at the same time, come out and see us October 5th and 6th at the uh, Grand Prix of Houston, Texas. And uh, we're going to be down around the Reliance Center. It's a race they've had in the past, but it, they haven't had it in a few years. So uh, Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's, that's the resurgence it. of the race. Amen. And thank you for being on the show, my brother. Hey, thank you, David. Hi, I'm Davey Hamilton with Kingdom Racing. It was June 9th in uh, Texas Motor Speedway 2001. Just another IndyCar race. Unfortunately, uh, the wrong place at the wrong time with a guy blowing an engine and me being on the outside of him when it happened. and um, Got me airborne, went over the wall through the fencing and um, sheared the front of my race car off to where I left the, my legs exposed and, and uh, basically almost had to amputate him. It was 21 surgeries uh, later that the doctors re rebuilt me and put my legs back together and uh, here we are today. Run at 200, you know, almost 220 miles an hour when the, when the impact happened. So it took a long time for the car to slow down and with my legs and feet exposed on the outside to the, to the elements with the, the asphalt and, and, and debris and walls, uh, they were, uh, you know, damaged horrifically to where they thought it was going to be amputation actually. And, um, so they got to the doctors in Indianapolis. Um, they got me from Texas to Indy and, you know, started the first of 21 surgeries in two years of time and, and started putting me back together like a few days after the accident. Hi, I'm George Del Canto, founder of Kingdom Racing. What really impacted me when I met Davey was he knew that was his worst accident he had had and he was against that wall and before the rescue you know, squad came up to cut him out of the car. He said, Jesus, I need you now. 
the day of my accidents, the day that over the phone when Tracy and I really decided to um, more than likely we were going to get divorced. Um, sometimes after the accident, I think you know it's 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 hard to there were so many rough times, but I think the toughest was um, going through um, you know the un uncertainty of my legs and um, losing my family through at the same time. I think that you had those two things together and that was it was typical because you, you can never get it off your mind. If I did not have the accident and um, I did not go through those tough times that my family wouldn't be together today. I was uh, you know I was saved when I was 20 years old um, and I you know I'm a Christian and my sport when you race 70 80 times a year on weekends by the way it was hard to participate in any one church or really get a good solid grasp of of um, you know the Christian lifestyle I should say maybe um, but but after the accident um, you know I relied on him more than ever um, asking questions of why it happened a lot of answers didn't come a lot of answers didn't come till later on but he's answered um, he's answered my questions many many times um, and there's you know that was a difficult time in my life I, I'm hurt don't know if I'm gonna even have legs don't know if I'm gonna walk Again, don't know, I was very lucky just to survive the accident, um, going through a divorce. Um, at the same time, um, it, was, it was a difficult time and um, painful time as well. But when it's all done, and it's all behind me, I look back and, and at the time I'm, at, I'm at asking all the questions, is God, why, why me and why this and what did I do? Um, but like I say, today I can answer all of them. I've been very fortunate to you know, get my family back to walk um, with my legs and my feet um, with I have the opportunity to hopefully help some people that are going through difficult times and that's what Christianity is about it uh, Christianity is about relationship with the Lord and walking with him every day well, the race is over the stands have cleared out the teams are packing up and almost ready to go you know, in motorsports, the race is about the competition, but our life is much more important than that, isn't it? You know, God gives us everything we need in life, and because of that, we can live with true integrity and a genuine desire for the well-being of others. Today, we heard the story of, of driver Davey Hamilton and how a horrific crash in Texas in 2001 almost took his life and certainly could have crippled him for life but how that, that terrible tragedy actually turned into a wonderful blessing in that he was able to rebuild his relationship with his wife Tracy, he was able to rebuild his body and actually return to racing, but most importantly he was able to rebuild and strengthen his relationship and his connection with Christ. You know we all live broken lives, whether the brokenness is caused by financial concerns, marriage challenges, or any challenge in our families, we're all broken in one way or another. But through Christ, we can experience the true joy and contentment that you see in people like Davey Hamilton. At Kingdom Racing, we hope you'll join our team, visit us on our Facebook page, share with us your prayer concerns, things that we can pray for with you, pray for you. Uh, we're making an effort each day to deliver the Word of God through the excitement of motorsports, and we really hope you'll join our team. Thank you so much for watching this video today, and we look forward to meeting you in person. It's yeah. about faith. It's, uh, it's about what you believe in. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? See, so what, what if a person's really good? You think they'd probably go to heaven? It, if they're I mean, doing everything right, they, I believe in heaven, so I think they should. Yeah. yeah I mean, if, if you do everything right, like you like, I mean, God, I mean, she ate the apple, so we, you know what I mean? So we'll sin, so everybody sins. Right. You know right. what I mean? You look at a girl lustfully, that's sinning off top. Cause yeah. I read yeah. the Bible. You know? So do you think you're a good person? Yeah, not, I'm a family guy. I got three kids, so. Three kids when you're 19? Yeah. I wanna love you like it's automatic. Make you in. It's my good habit. You're the only one that really matters. Love you like it's automatic.
Welcome back to the show. And uh, that was a great interview that I had with Charles West. And then hearing Davey's story. And Davey's one of their, their competitive racers there. And uh, they won, I think, the other day in Detroit. Well, it's been a few months since I talked to Charles, so it had to be that. But we're airing this very special that we're doing. And if you notice, we skipped our second segment. And the reason we did that was because we are promoting them for October 5th race here in Houston, Texas at the Texaco Grand Prix. And they're going to be out there representing Jesus at a place where it's predominantly very secular, but they're able to reach people. I was talking to, to um, Charles, and, he t and you heard on the interview that there are so many people that were touched by their rallies and the things that they do, and they have like a present, a, a celebration. And even a lot of the, the, the people that are on the circuit that aren't Christian would come to the celebration and hear great Christian contemporary artists uh, do the ministry out there. But that shows you something that God told me many, many uh, months, maybe even a year ago, when I was doing different things here in the ministry and trying to do everything else. But you know, you, you look, you analyze, you kind of see where, where you can help and what you can do. And I, I was praying and God just spoke something so strong in my ear. He said, do something different. And you have to think about that. Do something different. Do something different for me. Don't be like another church just doing the same thing the other church is doing. Get creative for me. Get, get excited about things. Change things. Do something different. Make it different so when they see the, see the work of God, they're going to come to God. You know, I think a lot of us get numb. A lot of us out there has heard the gospel preached in the street, and we become very numb to how it's being done. But we have to do things different. That's why I'm bringing different guests in here, like Charles West, Kingdom Racing. They're doing something different. They're doing something different to reach people for the Lord. They're going out there into where the secular people are, someplace Jesus would be at. And they're reaching them. They're not looking for to bring you into church and get you changed. They're going out there to change you and then get you into church. And I think that's the thing that we have to realize as men of faith, women of faith. we got to understand that we have to do things different to reach people. Um, lately, I've been taking ministers to, over to missions fields like Africa and India, and we're doing things different. It looks like similar, but what we're doing is training up armies of people in faith, pastors, leaders, people that want to do stuff for the Lord, and we train them and pray with them, and then we have a conference and we have them participate. I'm going to tell you some more testimonies of this on our next show that we have with Mike Reynolds coming up, but I want to just let you know, Kingdom Race on October 5th, um, I think believe it's 5th through the 7th here in Houston, Texas. Come and check it out. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to be able to see these great races. I'm going to a press rally um, just before on the 1st, on the 2nd. So I'll be out there and with my camera and taking pictures and getting autographs. Praise God. We'll catch you next time on the Midwatch. God bless you. You'll be a blessing. And always remember that you can write us at P.O. Box 5172, Kingwood, Texas, 77325. God bless you. And thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. The views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, this show, or its host.